The life of Mike Malloy is pretty much unknown to everyone. The way Mike died, however, is a completely different story that has become infamous over the years due to the way Mike managed to cheat death for months before finally succumbing to his fate. Michael Malloy was an Irish immigrant who settled in the United States. During the 1920s and the 1930s, he was a homeless man who lived on the mean streets of New York. The former firefighter had hit a rough patch and had grown a dependency on alcohol, like many did during this era. During this time, he began to frequent local speakacies. A speakacy is an illegal tavern selling alcoholic drinks. During the Prohibition era in the United States, the number of speakacies reached an all-time high. These bars were normally run by criminals. With World War I over and the country in good spirits, the demand for liquor swiftly increased and a new culture arose for individuals who saw an opportunity to profit. This meant hundreds of bootleggers, illegal alcohol smugglers and speakacies sprung up. There were thought to be 100,000 speakacies in New York alone. While attending one such venue, owned by a shady entrepreneur named Tony Marino, Malloy would find a place where he felt comfortable to drink, and it would become his local. Marino quickly learned that Malloy was completely dependent on alcohol and had no job, friends, or family. Knowing this, Marino devised a scheme to murder and exploit the Irishman for financial gain. Marino and his four criminal friends, Joe Murphy, Frank Pasqua, Dan Kreisberg, and tough Tony Bastone, planned to take out several life insurance policies on Malloy, then make sure he died of natural causes so they could claim the money and split the profits. Now this sounds crazy, however, Marino had gotten away with this before. He'd purchased an insurance policy for a homeless woman, listing himself as the beneficiary. He forced her to drink alcohol, stripped her naked, and then soaked her mattress in icy water and opened the window. She died the next day, and he claimed $2,000 and had gotten away with it easily. It wasn't difficult to trick Malloy into signing it off, and they did when he was drunk, with the help and promise of free alcohol. For their first idea, they decided to spike his drink with antifreeze and give him shots of blood alcohol. Malloy would continue to drink what the men gave him and ask for more. He had cheated death for the first time, and his incredible story had just begun. The gang of thugs weren't deterred, the next night, the group drove Malloy to a local park after a heavy drinking session where they doused him in water and left him on a park bench to freeze to death. To their shock, Malloy joined them at the speaker see the next day, claiming he needed a drink because he had caught a cold. After failing again, they began to spike his food with methanol and rat poison. Malloy, again, would simply ask for more. At this point, the group grew frustrated. They had no idea how he kept cheating death time and time again, but time and time again, he did. This time, they hired cabbie Hershey Green to run over Malloy as they filled him with booze. They brought him to a lonely street, propped him up, and then drove over him with a taxi, leaving him to die of his injuries. But Malloy didn't die. Malloy entered the speaker see a few weeks later after being discharged from hospital, claiming, I almost nearly died in hospital and then asked for a drink. The gang of criminals had finally had enough. They had no idea how Malloy kept cheating death over and over again. The killers took Malloy to Murphy's room on February the 23rd, 1933, after he had passed out during a night of drinking and inserted a hose into his mouth that was attached to the coal gas jet and switched it on. Malloy was finally killed as a result of this and died within an hour. Malloy's death was announced and the organization received funds from the life insurance plan. They had finally done it, but this isn't the end of the story. When Tony Bastone openly grumbled about his part of the court, the gang got into a heated argument. Tony was then shot outside the speaker seat as a result of the altercation. A witness had saw this, which had led to the arrest of Murphy. Because of the shootout, police were led right to Marino's speaker seat. Rumours began spreading like wildfire, and whilst in custody, the man told investigators about Mike Malloy and what the group had done to him. At first, the police didn't believe him, but after they examined Malloy's body, they were shocked to find out the truth. 
the other men were quickly arrested and once in custody began to turn on each other. With the exception of Hershey Green, the taxi driver, who was sentenced to life in prison, all of the members of the now dubbed Murder Trust were executed by electric chair in 1934. The doctor that they hired to sign off the death certificate was also arrested. Although there is no happy ending to this story, the legend of his death will forever live on. Malloy was buried in Ferncliff Cemetery in Hartsdale, New York.